guess who? It's Miss Wilder again. We're looking at multiplying decimal numbers tonight. The standard's the same as it's been with the adding and the subtracting, so I'm not going to rewrite that so you don't have to rewrite that. But we do need to write an I can statement for this. Okay, so together, I can multiply with decimal numbers. Okay, so right now you should have title, multiplying decimals, your standard, and your I can statement on your paper. Alright, so we're going to look at a problem. We're going to say 1 and 8 tenths and 24 hundredths. We're going to multiply these two numbers together. Now the difference between adding and subtracting and multiplication of decimals is you don't have to line up the decimal points. So don't line up the decimal points. That's an I there. Okay, so you don't have to line up the decimal points. So right here, you notice that the decimal points are not lined up. Okay, so I'm going to multiply just like I would multiply 18 times 24. Okay, we're going to completely ignore the decimal points until after we've worked the problem out. So we've got 4 times 8, which is 32. Carry our 3. 4 times 1 is 4. Plus 3 gives me 7. Okay, placeholder 0. 2 times 8 is 16. Bring down our 6 and carry our 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 1 gives me 3. Okay, now remember we're going to add these up. 2 plus 0 is 2. 7 plus 6 is 13. Carry our 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, so I've got 432. So if I was just add, if I was just multiplying 18 times 24, my answer would be 432. But since I'm multiplying 1 and 8 tenths times 24 hundredths, I need to place a decimal point in this answer. Now the way that we figure out how many decimal points are in the answer is we count how many numbers are behind the decimal point. And in this one, the 8 is behind the top decimal point, the 2 and the 4 are behind the bottom decimal point. So that's three numbers that are behind decimal points. So in my answer, I should have three numbers behind the decimal point. So if there were three numbers behind the decimal point in the problem, there will be three numbers behind the decimal point in the answer. Okay? So I want you to try one. I'll give you an easy one. Thirteen hundredths times seven tenths. Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes to answer this problem. So pause me and try this problem. This should be on your paper when you come to class. Hint, hint, hint. All right, so if you paused me like you were supposed to, you would have multiplied 7 times 3 is 21, carry my 2, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9. All right, well, I've got 1, 2, 3 numbers behind the decimal point. I've only got 2 numbers in my answer. What on earth am I going to do? Well, I have to have 3. Well, there's 1. I can put a decimal point there. That would give me one number behind the decimal point. That's not what I need. If I put a decimal point right here in front of the 9, that would be two numbers behind the decimal point. I need three numbers. So if I were going to add another place, what do you think I could put in this blank that would make it so that I could have three numbers behind the decimal point? Okay, if you said zero, you were right. Okay, my answer is going to be 0 .091 or 91 thousandths. Okay, I still needed three numbers behind the decimal point. Okay, I only had two, so I still had to have three, so I added that zero at the beginning. We do that with decimals, okay? All right, one more. This one might be a little tougher. Ah. Same problem. Oops. Alright, let's try this one. 
3 and 25 hundredths times 4.8. All right, 8 times 5 gives me, there's my decimal point, 40, good. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 4 gives me 20. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 2 should give me 26, placeholder 0. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 more is 10. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Alright, so I'm going to add these up. I've got a 0, a 0, a 6, a 5, and a 1. How many numbers do I have behind decimal points? Again, 3. Good. So I'm going to have my answer is 15 and six hundred thousandths. Now what can you tell me about these two zeros here? If I have two zeros at the end of a decimal number, behind the decimal point, and there's not another number, like a one, a two, a three, a four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, to hold them in place, we can drop them off and it's not going to change the answer. So 15 and six hundred thousandths is the same as 15 and 6 tenths. Okay? Alright, now we need to come up with some discussion questions based on our notes tonight. So, let's write a couple of discussion questions together. Yes, I'm helping you out. So over to this side, I want you to write discussion questions. <clears throat> Eventually, y'all will have to do this on your own. Alright, one thing that we could ask is, tell how many decimal places are in the product of 235 and 2 tenths times 24 hundredths, okay? So this could be a discussion question. How many decimal places are in the product of 235 and 2 tenths times 24 hundredths? This is a wonderful discussion question. Okay, so what I could do, what did we say? We needed to do what? We counted the number of numbers behind the decimal point. Okay, so how many numbers are behind decimal points? I've got one, two, three. So how many decimal places are in the product? Remember, product is the answer to a multiplication table. Okay, so the answer for this problem would be three. There would be three decimal places in the product of this problem. Alright, now I want you to come up with another discussion question that's under the same understanding. You can make your own problem like this, okay? Or if you want to go into detail and ask a specific question and just ask what is the product of, you could do that. Or which is greater and you could do two, um, two different facts and um, ask which product is greater. Those are really good discussion questions and I want to see what you come up with. I will see you in class. Toodles!